The Venezuelan government's plans to set up a constituent assembly which will rewrite the country's constitution has been met with widespread condemnation. The country's opposition held a symbolic vote on Sunday in which over 7 million people rejected the move, although the poll wasn't recognised by the government. Opponents to President Maduro's plan fear it would undermine democracy in the country and push back next year's election indefinitely. A severe economic crisis in the country has seen months of violent clashes between supporters and opponents of the government and over 100 people have been killed since April. Well, let's discuss this a bit further now with Eva Goninger, she's an attorney uh, and author based in New York. And we've also got here Christian Mansira, he's a lawyer and political activist too. Good evening to you both. Um, Christian, let's just start with you. I know you've been in contact, I understand, with a few protesters too. Why was there so much opposition, do you think, to this plan by Maduro to potentially rewrite the constitution? Christian. Well, I think because everybody in the Venezuelan community who is opposed to this plan uh, thinks and uh, clearly understands that his intention is to undermine the Constitution and to undermine the will of the people. Uh, there is no need to, to write a new Constitution. And the purpose of his idea is to suppress the, the current parliament and to silence their voices. So if the intent is to create a new Constitution that will benefit everybody and include every single sector of society in Venezuela, then so be it. But this is not the plan for Maduro. Maduro plans to constitute his own way, his own way of government, and uh, to suppress the people even more uh, beyond the fact that he has already killed 93 people and 1,500 people have been uh, uh, injured. So this is not a game of being a good president. This is a game of being a, a dictator, and that's his intent. Uh, and just briefly, Christian, before we bring in Eva, why was it so important for people to take to the streets too uh, in their thousands also? Well, I think it's very important because people wanted to demonstrate to the whole world how important their country is. They're concerned that their country is going the wrong way, that it's not a democracy anymore. And the only way to generate that is being able to have a voice to let the, every, every nation that has supported Nicolas Maduro and its regime and everybody who supports it, that they are willing to go beyond the line, beyond the, whatever it takes to bring their country back to democracy because it is clear that at this point that is not what is going on in Venezuela. So the reason why they were in the streets yesterday was to protest against the regime and to let everybody know that they're there, that there's about more than 7 million people mm. that, wanted, uh, that want the government out, and that's the purpose of their protest okay. yesterday. All right, Christian, let's bring in Eva now. I mean, what's your position on this, Eva? People are understandably angry about the situation of their country at the moment. Yes, I just really would like to correct an erroneous statement made by the other guest who said Maduro has killed 90 plus people. That's completely inaccurate and false, first of all. Wasn't um, Maduro directly. I understand the context would be security forces, but the facts show that actually a significant portion of those who've been killed in the anti government protests have been by the protesters themselves. Some have even been self inflicted injuries because they've been using lethal weapons such as Molotov cocktails and homemade guns and even bombs. Now, I'm not justifying either end, just that it's more important these days than ever to get your facts straight, especially when talking about an issue that's so polemic and controversial and very uh, passionate <laughs> on both sides. Now, I would say that we'd have to back up a little because, you know, Maduro was elected when Hugo Chavez passed away in 2013. He won by an incredibly slim margin um, of uh, under two points. And after that, protests started against his government. And so his government started off in a bad way. Then there was a severe economic crisis, heavily mismanaged by the Maduro government that actually increased the crisis even more, skyrocketing inflation, food shortages. At the same time, there has been sabotage on the part of private enterprises, hoarding products, and, you know, aiding in, in just the overall economic um, deterioration in the country. Now, at the same time, the government has responded. You know, there were times when Maduro tried to reach out to the opposition for dialogue. There was a brief moment of dialogue. It was rejected pretty much by both sides. And then things escalated again into protests. And then, you know, the more violent the protests have become, the more radicalized the government has become. So the opposition last year tried yes, to hold a recall clearly, referendum clear that the... on President Maduro, which is permitted okay. by the Constitution. I, I'd like to have a statement here without being cut off. <laughs> 
<laughs> please, um, tried to hold a recall referendum without, you know, to recall Maduro's mandate. It wasn't, it was stifled by the country's electoral body. They alleged that the opposition didn't meet the requirements. The oppos opposition saw it as an undermining of their constitutional right. Then the elections were, that were supposed to be held in December for governors okay. and mayors were delayed without justification. So this all led to the current crisis. And I mean, we have to under we have to put in that context because, you know, the the reason that the gov I'm not I am not in favor of a constitutional okay. rewrite. I I think that it's an inappropriate way to try to Fine, resolve the conflict. You're, you're, you're unhappy with the way. Certainly the, there needs to be a negotiation acted. between both sides. Okay, why haven't compromise. we, Christian, why haven't we got negotiations? Why can't two sides just sit down and talk? Uh, yeah, uh, before I respond to your question, I want to say that, I mean, it is clear that the uh, chief executive officer in Venezuela is President Maduro, and the National Guard has been the one that has operated these, uh, executed these killings of these young uh, protesters on the streets. Not There's all also of militia them. That's that has been killing these young protesters not on the streets. So I doubt that we're talking about self inflicted not wounds. I think it's a little them. bit uh, there, going too far to cast that accusation on the opposition when they're the ones on the street protesting who, against a government that has definitely suppressed democracy. So let's not, themselves. let's get the, straight, the, the facts straight. And let's not come here and say that Maduro is not guilty, because no. he is guilty of these killings and protests on the street being massacred uh, miserably. Uh, well, I'm a go lawyer, ahead, your question so again, I don't please? judge the guilt of someone based on false facts. <laughs> okay, look, we've debated yeah. that fact quite Well, if, you know, if, uh, I, I am a lawyer as well, and I have Christian, very clear understanding of who's the one in charge of ordering okay, those people. Christian, well, to you're to that. Please answer the evidence question, though, Christian. False, Why so. can't both sides sit down and talk? What are the stumbling blocks here? Christian. Well, the main issue has been that throughout the whole process, uh, the government has uh, been uh, generating many obstacles, and uh, the country is really tired. People have no food on the street. Uh, there are the situation of the inflation. The economy has really gone uh, down. So, I mean, there are the the topics right now in the, in the, on the table are either the government goes away and sets a, a transition government. Or uh, there's no point of negotiation because uh, the way that we are right now is very complicated to come down to the table when the government That's wants to suppress uh, democracy and they want to, to eliminate the parliament by activating a new constitution that will definitely uh, go in, uh, in the wrong way of democracy, which is very clear. I mean, uh, we are judging here history based on the facts of this government of Maduro and Hugo Chavez, and they are not uh, the people who really care about democracy. They want to turn Venezuela into some kind of Cuba. Uh, number two let's just, and okay. uh, that's why the people went out okay to now walk, let's uh, let massive. Eva respond Eva I would just say that there are elections presidential elections by law are supposed to take place next year there is no reason why in a democracy one party or the opposition coalition of parties cannot wait until those elections and prepare for those elections prepare their candidate why should a government, I understand that the crisis in Venezuela is severe, but you see, this is precisely the problem. The opposition calls only for regime change. That is their only path to, to you know, what, what they want to achieve. The government is saying we were elected legitimately, no matter, you may not like us, but, and there may be problems, but the solution is not regime change in a democracy. A government doesn't just step down unless there is a whole process that would permit that, which would have been a recall referendum, which I agree, you know, possibly should have taken place. At the same time, now we're at a, I, I a point where more than, uh, Nearly 100 people have been killed in street protests that have been put on by violent protesters who are using Molotov cocktails and bombs, not something that would be permitted in any democracy. I don't think that that's an appropriate path. But I think what the opposition you, did yesterday is, is an appropriate path. I think that the solution should not be rewriting the Constitution. It should be allowing for elections to take place as they should according to the current Constitution, and both sides should be preparing for that instead of killing each other in the street or calling for foreign intervention that could, in, that could make the crisis what it is today a thousand times worse. Mm. Christian, let me just pick up on something you said. You said, look, there's no alternative to regime change. Why is that? 
because the people in Venezuela are tired of this government. Even people who supported Hugo Chavez from the beginning have stepped out to say that this is not what they voted for. This is not what they wanted when they chose Hugo Chavez as their president, nor did they expect Maduro to bring the country down in the way it is right now in such economic uh, crisis. So what we're seeing here is not about waiting and sitting down while the government, I mean, the people of Venezuela wait to see how the country goes down in flames. I mean, they have to step forward to look for change and That's call out the government to stop works. doing I'm what sorry, they're doing. The other day, you know, they stepped, they stepped into Hugo the Chavez. parliament and they started beating up the, uh, the parliament members. And is that a democracy? Government, Please. But I believe and I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, to <laughs> say <laughs> to the opposition okay. and to the people who voted yesterday to just sit down and wait for this government to go away, it is ridiculous. All right. Well, let, Eva, where is this going to end? Are we going to see an escalation in violence? Period. Eva, are we going to see an escalation in violence here? Because yes, listening to both this, arguments, you there's, see there's no way forward. Absolutely. That's what's going to happen. That's what seems to be the case. You see, if neither side is willing to compromise at all, then the only thing that will happen is more violence and death. And that it seems to make no sense, except for both sides are so stuck in their desire for power that they are unwilling whatsoever to compromise and find a solution for the good of the people. Because like the other guest just said, there are thousands if not millions of people who supported Chavez, and I happen to be one of them, who are not happy with the current government and the situation. But the solution is not regime change. I'm not happy with the government in this country, with Donald Trump, but the solution is not regime change. We prepare for electoral process. That's what we do in a democracy. Yes, we're tired. Yes, we don't like You're it. You're going to the same situation. It's not the same situation. Is not violence the same in the street, killing each other, and regime change. Christian yes, response. Yes, it's a similar there, situation. No way you, it, you know, the, the opposition always thinks it's about regime change. They have no alternative. And Christian. that's precisely the reason why they've never been successful okay. in their initiatives. Christian, respond to that. Well, it is very clear that uh, the solution is regime change. I mean, I am surprised that, that the other guests will even uh, suggest that it's not the only way. I mean, we have seen throughout the last uh, two or three years how the situation That's an outrageous statement. That's like a complete violation of the, the Constitution of democracy. The government has suppressed democracy, and the it's government crazy. has suppressed <laughs> any possibility for the opposition to make their voice be heard, and that's why they're on the street. The situation will escalate, and either the government sits down and finds a way to, uh, to call for a uh, uh, government of transition, or they have to step down, or the people will take them out. Either way, this is not uh, the same thing as, uh, as the See, other guest compares go. the United States and Mr. Trump to uh, Maduro. That, that comparison doesn't play. But the only thing for sure so, is that Venezuela needs a regime change. People are calling it on the street, and we cannot sit down and li leave those people down there uh, living the way they are while their country goes down in flames. Eva, last 30 seconds to I'm you. I'm very glad you had this guest on to um, admit exactly what the opposition in Venezuela is. That's precisely the problem and precisely why they've never been able to achieve, you know, any objectors with any objectors. Calling for democracy, a is, of democracy uh, is, is because bad. they are not people who work within democracy. Okay, Regime look, change is not democracy. I am sure you would like Elections to be on the streets making a line Wait to ask for food. I vote. would like to see you making a line to get your food. Okay, all right, look, thanks to you both. We understand tense situation. I don't see you making Many one. different <laughs> sides to the argument. Christian Mansira, lawyer and political activist, and that was Eva Gollinger too, attorney and author. Thanks to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Now,